I will definitely start and I'll go nuts and build the whole movie with title cards if if I have a few extra days and I'll just do that. But as soon as I have the real material, I jettison those those things. I mean, they're in there, they're somewhere, and if I need them, I can find them. But I don't like to keep past five or six video channels is enough for me. I don't like to go too much past that. <laughs> During my initial meeting with Zach, he did get out his iPad and do some storyboards while we were talking. He is a really visual person. That's his favorite way to communicate, and he's pretty much always doing drawings for VFX and that kind of thing. So Carlos is familiar with that and is adept at grabbing those, getting them from whatever source he delivers it to Carlos and getting it into the Avid. And then I use it right away. I put it straight into the cut, anything like that. And I do a lot of pre-building of the movie before they're shooting with all the stunt fizz, all the storyboards, and Zach doesn't do a table read, which I thought was kind of interesting. Normally, I take a table read and lay on those storyboards and cards and everything, and I'll start building the movie right away. So in this case, I just had to do it with the existing stunt fizz. By the way, the stunt fizz is his team, the stunt people that he's been working with for years. They do really advanced, carefully choreographed, timed out stunt fizz that has been edited. So I get a little edited piece that shows all the action that they're going to shoot. Zach is the kind of director who likes to see everything all in. In full flower is the way I would describe it. He does a lot of shooting where, I mean, there was a scene of Scott driving from, uh, actually there was a scene of him throwing out the trash and saying goodbye to the woman in the kitchen of uh, the lucky boy, the greasy spoon where he works, getting in his car, starting his car, driving through town, walking in, this is all uh, the uh, walking from his car through the courtyard of his apartment building. There's a whole long slow motion montage of some kids playing, pretending to be zombies that 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 was really fun and uh and then him arriving at home and playing you know opening up the tube and looking at the schematics of the safe so that was all edited and in the assembly with the called out uh source song that was in the script and <laughs> playing on the radio and all of that but he enjoyed seeing it and it was almost immediately jettisoned. I mean, we knew that we were looking at a different, you know, we weren't looking to make a three and a half hour movie. So it's not like he wanted to see it because he wanted to see that what was going to, you know what I'm saying? So I think you make the film the length the film needs and wants to be. And we knew that we wanted to get it to around two and a half and, and or a little under. Without credits, it's about 220. But the other project that was being done upstairs is a prequel animated series of Army of the Dead. There's also a prequel film that's focused on the character Matthias Schweighoffer plays Ludwig Dieter. So that's already actually been shot and is completed, more or less. They're in their finishing phases of post. And I'm pretty sure there's discussions for another Army of the Dead movie after. I mean, it ends with the cliffhanger, which looks like a pretty good springboard into another film.